Hey guys, today we're going to be unboxing this brand new Hobeo VTE2 and with some modifications guys, hopefully this will become a 170 mile an hour RC car. So without further ado, let's begin. So like I said, this is the Hobeo VTE2. It's a 1 7 scale rolling chassis speed run platform. And here we've got all the modifications and parts that we're going to be fitting to this car. So starting off with some electrics, we've got the world's best speed running ESC, the Castle XX2. And we're going to be coupling this up to this enormous 58 113 size, 1300 kV Leopard Hobby motor. Guys, this thing is just enormous. And actually, a massive thank you to Ben Hammer from Rosser for suggesting this motor to me. He showed me all the logs and data I need to see to back up that this motor should theoretically have enough power to suit this car's goals. So we've got some pinion gears over here, some crazy gearing that we're going to be fitting and we've also got some QS8 connectors uh, to fit onto the XLX2. We've also, to be able to withstand the power, got some titanium scorch centre drive shafts. Obviously, we're going to be running foam tyres on this car. These are just going to be the test run tyres I'm going to use. They're not that hard of a compound and they're also absolutely knackered as well, as you can see. And then finally, guys, we've got this beautiful Porsche 916 Seven Delta Plastics body shell and very kindly my friend Andy actually gave this to me and as you can see it is just absolutely beautiful it's going to look so good on this car. So I still need to sort something out for the servo and the radio gear I'm still undecided of what to do with that so if you guys have any suggestions uh, then let me know in the comment section below and then for batteries guys I'm in the process of sorting out a deal with Onyx uh, so hopefully they should be able to help me out with a couple batteries there. Obviously guys if we're going to go for 170 miles an hour we need good batteries so hopefully Onyx will come to the rescue for that so without further ado guys now let's get this thing unboxed and get it built Check it out guys, the car's all on box. So obviously in the box we've got the car, we've also got an instruction manual and we've also got some motor mounting hardware and some rear body posts. And guys, this is probably the best 1 7 scale speed run platform that money can buy. I mean, just look at the size of this chassis and like look at the size of this rear drive shaft here. This is just enormous. It is a little bit of a shame that I'm going to be swapping this out for the Scorch run, but my friend Andy's got his VT2 up to I think 174 miles an hour and he said that the titanium drive shafts were essential. So we're not going to take any gambles with crashing this car by exploding a drive shaft, so the titanium ones are going to go straight in. Later on, we might actually test out to see how much this thing can withstand. So first, guys, let's think about getting the motor in. And since this motor is just so unbelievably huge, it's not actually going to fit in the stock motor mount. So we've got the Hobeo VTE2 one fifth scale motor mount. It's made by Hobeo, as you can see, so it's going to drop straight in. But unfortunately, the motor is actually still too long to fit at the front here. So very luckily, what we can do is actually move this whole motor mount system back. If you have a look under here, We've got another hole and we've got another set of screw holes there. So hopefully once we've done that, that motor will fit nicely at the front here. This will be quite good for the weight distribution. But if it's still too long for any reason, then what we can do is reverse this motor mount and then the motor will be facing this way. So let's go ahead and do that now. So in order for these to fit, once we've moved the motor mount back, we need to swap the front and the rear drive shafts over. Guys, that is a perfect fit. Oh yes, I am so happy. Guys, I'm not gonna lie to you, I was a little bit worried about this motor actually fitting in the car because this motor mount is only suitable for up to 57 millimeter motors and this one's 58. And it has all these little bits of extra metal on the top. So I was a little bit skeptical with whether this was going to fit or not. But it fits absolutely perfectly, just sitting nicely on the chassis. So now let's get a pin on here and then after that we can actually get the XLX2 in here. So the initial plan, guys, was to use this pinion here, 33, as the spool, and then use the existing 34 spool as the pinion, as in this would gear the car for about 130 miles an hour, so a nice starting gearing. But unfortunately, where this motor is so big, 
it's not actually going to fit, the gears aren't going to connect. So, we're probably going to have to use one of these gears here, which I was going to work up to, or we might even have to use this as the spool, and then this as a pinion. We'll have to see. Let's just have a little experiment. Let's start off with this one here. This is the one that's most likely going to fit. <laughs> Check it out guys, the 45 fits absolutely perfectly. It's meshing nicely with the spool. So this was a little bit higher gearing than I thought it was meant to be. This is actually for exactly 170 miles an hour. So it's a little bit high for starting gearing. I might put the 40 uh, tooth to replace the spool, but I can't get one of the screws out from under here. Uh, so we'll just leave it for now. And if we need to gear down, then we'll gear down. So next, let's have a look at the ESC. <laughs> So here it is guys, the XLX2. This is just absolutely enormous guys. This can withstand I think more than 600 amps. Look at the size of these cables as well. So as for where to place the ESC guys, I was initially thinking here or maybe here, but unfortunately these motor wires aren't long enough to actually reach into the terminal. So we could reverse the motor or we could put the ESC up here, but instead what I'm going to do is remove this receiver box here, stick it at the back somewhere and then move the ESC forwards up behind the servo. <laughs> It would fit like this guys, but it doesn't leave us much room at all for the batteries. Let's see if one of these even fits in here like this. Looks like it's gonna work guys, so let's get a bit of Velcro under this thing and get it stuck down permanently. Guys, that's both the motor and the ESC in there now as you can see the ESC is lovely and secure and we've also got a little bit of clearance there between the spool and the side of the ESC so that's all absolutely perfect so next let's get this receiver box in and we'll probably put it back here because then it's nice and close to the ESC but it's also close to the servo as well <laughs> So since the motor is sensorless, we can go ahead and remove this sensor wire here from the ESC. As you can see guys, I've tried to keep the wiring as neat as possible, hence I've put the receiver box as close to the ESC as possible. There we go, I've also gone ahead and taped up the switch cable, I want to try to keep this build as clean as possible guys. So next I'm going to go ahead and get the wheels on the car guys, and then we can have a look at fitting his rear body post so we can get the body on the car. <laughs> Luckily guys, this body shell was intended to be used on a VT2 by Andy, so these holes here are actually made to fit this car perfectly. So by the looks of it guys, we need to raise up the front body posts, as you can see it's way too low, and we also need to raise up the back ones as well as not even poking through the body shell. So we'll go ahead and make those changes, and then the body will fit perfectly. Alright, so we've made a couple of adjustments guys, so let's try again. Much better.
what do you reckon guys that is the car pretty much finished and oh my god does this thing look good so as you can see the body is now sitting on there absolutely perfectly so in the next video guys we're gonna get the car finished off so i've got a perfect pass servo on order we'll get all the radio gear in the car we'll solder up the connections bind all the electrics we'll get a front split on the front of the car and we're also going to be fitting a live pose so i've contacted onyx and very kindly they said that they're happy to help and support this project so on the way guys we've got the best speed running live pose in the business so a massive thank you to onyx for supporting this project if you have a look in the description i'll leave a link to their website so all of that is going to be fitted in the next video and in the video after that we're going to be taking the car for its maiden voyage so if you want to watch all that make sure that you subscribe and that you've pressed the notification bell but for now that's it for me i hope you have a brilliant day all weekend and hope to see you next time in the next video bye